In Destiny, there exists a challenge that will push players beyond their mortal limits, a way for the most greasiest of gamers to elevate themselves by proving they are strong enough to rise to any occasion and expertly weave a symphony of death by combining the peak of in-game knowledge, battle sense, and cat-like reflexes, a challenge in which a player descends into the dangers that lurk inside of a Destiny dungeon, an activity that was handcrafted for three players to bang knuckles with the enemies of the last city and super Plex that bitch like grandma at the old folks home and undertake that task alone in an attempt to achieve nirvana by disregarding safety and vanguard protocol to claim glory. It's a nigh religious act where the player must enter the flow state, leaving behind all earthly bounds to finally realize the ancient act of the Olo Flawless. As your professional internet father figure that regularly leaves to go get the milk when Bungie was slated to release a new dungeon based on the Lucent Hive and getting wetter than your mother when I show her my vault. What is half the shit? <laughs> I knew that I once again had no choice but to strap into my dick tight wetsuit and get ready to travel to Bikini Bottom, where instead of underwater cartoon hijinks, I was to be met with flying insects that were strapped with plastic explosives. So join me, Papa Rye, as we fragment what remains of my waning self esteem all along the ocean floor like an ocean gate submersible. As I solo flawless ghosts of the deep, so you don't have to. We find ourselves on the methane moon of Saturn, Titan, hosting the new Pacific Arcology, a scientific research station interested in uncovering groundbreaking discoveries, like can a trials player truly develop self-respect, and why does Bungie fund Marathon with my money? <laughs> That's a little too real. With the Lucent Hive up to no good, it was time to send in the Traveler's mightiest warrior to save the day. But sadly, Esoteric was busy, so the Vanguard opted to send in the We Have Esoteric at Home of Destiny. Now the Hot Wheels man is a bit of a machine. I'm a killer. A downright felon. Pop, pop. But I'd be lying if I said that my tried and true tactic of banging my nuts against a drum until I accidentally played Mozart was gonna work this time. Bungie, in their never-ending quest to purple my nurples, once again went above and beyond by placing some of the most heinous, vile machinations of their minds in between me and the solo flawless. If it's not the kamikaze moth using Vex prediction engine level shit to perfectly plot a course for my asshole, it's the physics deaths and teleporting my mouth directly in of the barrel of an incendiary's napalm launcher. To say this dungeon was anything other than drinking the forbidden liquid at the bottom of a garbage bag would be lying. Now this may come as a shocker, but your boy took a break from Destiny to study the Book of Gambit, attempting to learn 3D animation and Blender as a whole. Little did I know that I'm a fucking Neanderthal and that 3D animation- Ooh, 3D animation's got some hands! In my personal Vinland saga where I was getting my ass beat by 3D programs, I spent so much time away from Destiny that I transmogged into a dad gamer, an absolute boomer who doesn't know what and Elytra is in Minecraft until about two months ago. Of course, in my brilliance, I thought that for my first time coming back, what better way to get me in the destiny spirit than to obliterate what remains of my youthful energy, whittling away countless hours of my life as I go for a solo flawless? My original thought was I'd use the tried and true subclass of Void to power through, as when kitted with Devour and a whole suite of Void weaponry, you can be nigh unkillable. At least that might have been the case back when the Stone Age is where I belong. <laughs> I slap on Fat Roke's helmet and the new Solstice coat that made me a speed run world record holder speed runs what separates the boys from the men and today solstice of heroes with a world record <laughs> title screen there we go 31 seconds that's pretty good character select god that's big i need the record was not a gold split on character select i definitely could have done better easy let's go quick run good start S into the slide oh no not enough space! <laughs> I'm gonna get this. I'm getting world record. I'm submitting it straight to speedrun.com. There's no way they can refute this proof. Wh why is this taking so long? <laughs> what the fuck? <laughs> this is terrible. God, is that Bungie servers? The Wi-Fi is throwing? Uh, my mistake was not having fiber optics directly to Bungie HQ. Classic rookie mistake. All right. Slide into Evil Levante. All right, we got the armor. I'm cracked. Right there, two minutes and 54 seconds. Huge! So much event this year, it's it's more than we've ever gotten. I'll see you next year. <laughs> With Void now finally realized it was time to take the monkey out of the man and attempt to build a strand set. I spent ages inside of the character customization screen, meticulously crafting nearly each and every piece of my set. I was a build crafting artist, and Warlock was my canvas. To say that the Karnstein armlets give your boy some serious power and survivability when paired with a strand grapple melee was an understatement. A build 
sounds so strong I would leave Goku twisted up like a pretzel. Despite all the artistry and prowess on display, you'd be surprised to know that you've been led astray. Much like writing a book on the moral teachings of a gambit- <laughs> Much like writing a book on the moral teachings of the gambit game mode. I've wasted your time as I never touch this build again. Honestly don't know why I made it. But in the middle of my build crafting journey, where I was stuck in my Barbie dress up game, the pinnacle of destiny content as you build a perfectly designed set that will still get outclassed by even the shittiest of Shrigma's drip, I decided to head into the real game of destiny by loading up the Eververse store. You see, Papa Rai could smell Hot Wheels on the horizon. It calls to me, like a sailor to the sea, and as somewhat of a seaman myself, I had to chase it. You see, I read that there was a bumper boat on sale for bright dust. Racing off to the store, I was met with nothing but disappointment as the sex carriage didn't have any room for those of the broke-ass variety. I have no money! <laughs> With my dreams of collecting hot exo milfs while I drive the mobile jacuzzi along the methane shores crush, it was time to dive into the dungeon. The Arcology was always one of my favorite locations in Destiny. It captures everything that I wanted to see. I don't give a shit about a pristine Neo Muna. These cowards hid away while Earth was getting the super slurper guac guac 9000. I like it when things are dingy. There's plenty of garbage to eat. That's right, I'm a raccoon. <laughs> I wanted to scavenge my way through old abandoned apartments and blast apart the homeless shelter with a warlock key blast. Either way, the Arcology captures that old age of technology perfectly, I take a moment to stare up at the beautiful skybox, then hit the NOS on my bumper car to make for the first encounter. Now in the beginning I believed I was a killing machine, able to go toe to toe with only the most ontological of threats, violently exploding my way across the battlefield and seizure inducing bouts of purple. Little did I know the skill tree I was about to unlock was about to be apocalyptic for my enemies. Slow and steady was the name of the game for this first encounter however, which I executed flawlessly. With my power tools being a combo of austerity Osteoporosis, retrofit escapade, and my beloved null composure, it was disgusting. You know what? It actually is quite impressive for a Destiny player with joints about as old as the Golden Age. I took my time, wasn't hasty, just kept my eyes on the prize. A stark contrast to my leave from Destiny, retreating to my getaway of Sons of the Forest, where I moonlighted as cannibal Gordon Ramsay and treated Calvin like a glorified lumberjack. But returning to Destiny was like wrapping myself in a warm blanket. It has me appreciating how amazing the game just feels. It's smooth, buttery, and watching all those colors on screen is so pleasant on the eyes. No matter how much shade I throw at Destiny, it is hard to escape the fact that it indeed haunts my boners. Little did I know that despite your boy hitting like a freight train and really feeling that Destiny tickle deep down in my scrota, I was about to undertake a monumental amount of mental anguish. After returning more ghost spirits to the ether by way of obliteration between my greasy gamer knuckles and about 18 minutes of excessive explosive violence, I tickle the last statue's pickle and slippery skedaddle my ass inside the arcology to go deeper than I ever have before. I frequently stop on my way down the dungeon because of the mesmerizing choice of color and how beautiful the dungeon is. There's something about crawling through the inner workings of this massive complex that activates the inner rat inside my blood. This dungeon is gorgeous at nearly every twist and turn. A fact that was about to be turned up to 11 as you reach the hollow fathom. Before the long descent some hive try to jump me but in life you gotta take a shit before the shit takes you so I spank some serious ass and begin my descent into the depths below. I cannot stop myself from looking at the beauty that lies in these depths. Let's face it, Destiny's graphics hit harder than a surprise Nova Bomb vasectomy. The game has so many beautiful alien landscapes that you feel like you've dropped acid at a planetarium. <laughs> There's so much that Bungie put in to make this work. This just solidifies in my mind that the Hive are some of the coolest enemies in the game. I mean, just look at this shit! It leaves you with a massive sense of awe and wonder as you question your place in the universe. A feat that is hard to achieve from just scenery alone. I then dive deep into the depths. A unique and innovative mechanic that Bungie should have expanded on even more than just a traversal piece, because seeing this massive descent into the methane depths is such a cool feature that hits every note for what I want in Destiny. You know, moments like these really take me back to the very reason I fell in love with Destiny in the first place. The mystery, the awe, and the sense of venturing into the unknown as a lone soldier of humanity. It's like you're a small speck in this vast, sprawling universe, just doing your best to leave your mark. I can't help but reminisce about those early days when my character first rose, way back when Destiny 1 had us climbing those Cosmodrome calls ships, facing new threats and defying the odds to take on the Taken King aboard the Dreadnought. The feeling of power when I first learned to wield the Stormcaller subclass, standing tall as the last bastion of Siva, as an Iron Lord and the massive assault on the Almighty, taking back our city. But you know, Destiny's blood runs a bit thicker in my veins. It goes a bit deeper than that. When my older brother moved away, this game was what kept us connected. He gifted me the Taken King expansion after the not-so-great vanilla campaign that ended with disappointment and the hot Exomami giving me no time to explain.
explained, promising it would be worth it. Now I fought this man tooth and nail, but despite that, I gotta say, the man was right. He guided me through it all, and I experienced one of the most engaging and immersive experiences of my life. I truly felt like I was the last hope for humanity, standing against impossible odds. And here we are now, years later, with Destiny having been a constant companion throughout my journey. It's been there during some of the most significant moments in my life, something I'm sure that you can relate to. I grew from a wide-eyed boy into the Hot Wheels Papa that I've become, and it's crazy to think that Destiny has been there nearly every step of the way. Sure, there's been ups and downs, some expansion soaring to incredible heights, like the Taken King, Forsaken, and the Witch Queen. Savathun, my beloved, come back and save me from the cringe! <laughs> At the end of the day, sometimes I find it's essential to take a moment every now and then and reflect on the wild ride that it's been. Almost my entire life has been intertwined with Destiny, and mother of God, we're actually approaching the end now. All that time spent, all the challenges that I've personally undertaken, maybe when I look back and reflect on it, despite the community sentiment and Bungie's fucking of my wallet, maybe it was all worth it in the end. Cause Destiny, well, it's become more than just a game. It's a part of the story, one that we all share, and I'm grateful for the memories and adventures that it has given me across the years. I wouldn't have been as close with my brother as I am now without it. So to all you fellow guardians out there, don't let this colossal Bungie L rub salt in your wounds. Take a moment to reflect on your own journey through this. It truly is an incredible universe. Remember the battles fought, the friendships forged, and the unforgettable experiences that have shaped us. Destiny has been there, and who knows, maybe there's some light in what the future holds. Now what do you say? Eyes up, Guardian. Once more into the deep. Now as a self-proclaimed intellectual gamer, I derive masochistic pleasure from playing games that plunge me into existential dread. Because the outside world is a dumpster fire for God's most oppressed warriors. That being the, g <laughs> being the gamer. <laughs> Toss in a little bit of how I can make this worse. The whole segment of the dungeon reminds me of the time I played Soma, thinking it would be a fun little horror game and accidentally crippling myself with existential dread for about a week. Now we all know that warlocks are cut from a different cloth in the Destiny universe. The Destiny God's gift to Guardians, holding on to otherworldly, universal power that can level the battlefield in explosive splendor. Truly, the Chad Thundercocks of Destiny. But there's one field we lack in that makes us the easiest class to clown on. You gotta target the Achilles heel with us. Much like your average Redditor, we can't jump. And after about 36 minutes of pounding this dungeon like my Elsie Bray body pillow, I got hit with that weakness. Accidentally skipping off a ledge and slowly watching you miss your jump location because you burst glided into the trip's momentum. Probably my number one killer in trials. I skip a stair on the staircase on this map and activate my burst glide just to watch any hope surviving my battle go out the window. You know, I remember not even feeling any pain in this moment. I become numb to this experience and I've just accepted it as a way of life. Only uttering the words, that is so sad, as I watch myself slowly lose 37 minutes of my life. Infinite cosmic power! <laughs> All right, baby, let's get this bread. The sprinkles always gotta find their way to the donut. The icing inevitably meets the cake. <laughs> it's part of the growth process. Gotta grow the wheat before the harvest. I dominate the ever-loving fuck out of the first encounter, giving them the simian surprise as I <laughs> I'm a destroyer, an outright criminal. I'm basically playing through the fire and flames and guitar hero on expert mode for the fucking DS. <laughs> God, this game fucks. And wiggle it like a madman. <laughs> I descended to the depths at a breakneck pace, where once I was still learning the ropes at 37 minutes, now I'm blitzing through at 20. I slow down and initiate my jump from a dead stop and clear the gap. I style on the hive with energy from the depths of the void and watch a legion of thralls get atomized in front of me. Enter the room with many different tunnels. Pick one, enter, and uh, oh, oh fuck. <laughs> this one didn't work out that well. As you can see, I appear to have stranded myself second only to death by poor jumps on the list of how many times something has killed me. Lies hive architecture being a colossal kick in the dick. I try to panic neutrino star, but only wind up prolonging my suffering. God damn it, Riley, we're so close. All right, now buckle up, kiddos, because this is where we start to hit some turbulence. For those among you with a decent amount of brain activity, you'll soon realize that using void in this dungeon is something that needs to be treated with respect. You see, I trusted in my abilities as a destiny player. Bad move, bitch boy. While I was really feeling the explosive power of my build, floating my dress wearing warlock ass around the room with reckless abandon as I vaporized everything that got in my way, I was hit with an age-old tale. Overconfidence is a slow and insidious killer, and it was here that I became impatient, sluggish, and disorderly. Having come this far, I was itching to sprint towards my triumphant comeback. But unfortunately, in a move that can only be considered legendary for all the wrong reasons, and in a move that is sure to blue screen your brain faster than trying to teach a geriatric how to operate a smartphone, I accidentally chunky dunked the Nova Bomb directly onto my flat skull. And in the next run, I break away at an impressive pace, diving full bore into the fray with reckless 
course, abandoned. But for some reason, my guardian couldn't take the heat, so he had to get out of the kitchen as I folded like a wet newspaper. What the fuck even happened to me, though? <laughs> my soul just said, Adios, boss. Peace the fuck out of there. <laughs> this is hilarious to me. It reminds me of my old physics death, where you'd stub your toe. I would watch your ribcage fucking explode. Bring it back, Bungie! Now I was at a point where I was getting impatient and rushing myself. It was drawing near five in the morning, but with my belief that I could handle anything and that sleep would only weigh me down, I knew that there was only one way to bring faith back to the Hot Wheels religion, was to slay this beast with a monster of my own. That's right. What has 182 teeth and holds back a monster? You're goddamn right. It's my zipper. <laughs> Gotta gird up them loins, boy. So I tightened my cabals once again and flew right back into the fray only to be shot down with a barrage of absolute piss missiles from this wizard. Son of a bitch! <laughs> this isn't going very well. After clearing the first encounter, I finally make my way down into the cold depths of the methane moon. I don't know what came over me, but it was at this point I was seriously starting to doubt myself. It might have been how early it was in the morning and I let those 5 a.m. feelings hit a bit different. You know what they say, never trust how you feel about your life after 9 p.m. But something got to me in a weird way, and I think I finally figured out how to explain it. With each passing day, I'm feeling little bits break away, be that parts of my humor, love for the things that I used to cherish, only amplified by the ungodly hour and staring into the abyss of my 12th failure this night. Honestly question it all, not knowing if I was doing the right thing or moving in the right direction. I've always wanted to be the person that people can depend on and look up to, but I often find I stretch myself too thin and get frustrated with myself because I can't even come close to doing everything I wanted to in a day. I don't know why it's so hard for me to accept myself and the limitations that come with that, acting out in defiance that there's not enough time in a day, so I carry that stress and pile more in my back until my skin starts flaking off. There's wisdom that I haven't learned yet in learning to trust yourself and say that you'll do great things and there is so much more to you. You just need to give yourself time, but when I stare at the clock and watch it constantly ticking, it's hard to find time to slow down and appreciate everything. As much as I like to joke around and have fun in these videos, they're my solace, a way for me to find comfort and humor, creating something I'm proud of, my platform to grow with myself instead of against myself. But that didn't stop the next encounter from hitting me with a bag of <laughs> Ekthar being a being in which I want to kiss the hairiest parts of my ass due to the sheer molestation they unleashed. I thought the power of void would carry me through, but after getting evaporated when my retrofit couldn't LMG the knight that drops the well for damage quick enough via the sentinel shield colonoscopy method, I think I was done. Now I'm a man with the patience of a saint. I've got the mental fortitude of a gambit player believing the mode will improve. But to say this moment broke me was an understatement. Physical recovery? One hour. Emotional recovery? Not gonna happen. <laughs> but you know what they say. You either come in the sink or sink in the cum. And ain't no way I'm drowning in baby batter. After a brief three hour cry session, enough monster energy to fit a Kojima in-game ad, it was time to bounce back. Your boy doesn't stay down for long. As the ancient text is written, we do a little rising to the occasion. I annihilate the battlefield, collect the runes, twist the statue's penile proclivities, and make my way through the waters. I dash through the winding, loosened corridors with righteous Hot Wheels fury like no other, and upon entering the second encounter, a knight styles on my void powers by planting me like a fucking tree. <laughs> <laughs> now, not only was I sufficiently brainurized and given a hernia by feeling my baby level gaming, your boy returned to D2 poverty by using the last of his raid banners, which is basically like spotting a unicorn in Destiny. If you run out of raid banners, you are beyond underprepared. That's some next level shit. Not only that, but if you remember in one of my previous runs, I had died and reran the dungeon so much, fired my gun an insane amount of times, meaning that my controller had developed this signature Riley reloaded death squeak on the right trigger. Fellas, you gotta hide your mothers because Papa Ryan finger strength is off the charts. Unleashing my inner gamer meant the controller's time on this corporeal plane of existence was now waning with each passing second. Age that shit in a decade and a couple of dungeon runs. With all the talk of your boy being able to elevate his gaming experience to the next level, the amount of times I've broken my own spirit was downright disgusting. There was almost no way I would be able to pick up the pieces of my fragile ego after this one. I make my way through, gathering the runes, then descending into the depths, and when I hit the second encounter, I kill the knight, but forget to stand in the pool to get the buff for the shields, and he winds up flatlining me with his super. In the next run, my faith in my ability to wield a controller gets fucking obliterated by using advanced neural engine level NPC AI to pop a rip in the middle of the fucking blender as every single hive in the arena turns their weaponized autism on my fragile warlock bones. My bones! <laughs> and, and, <laughs> this is painful. I'm rewatching it. I'm reliving it again. It was in death number 19 that I had finally reached the boiling point. Pompa Rai had expended all of his Hot Wheels fury. The battery was running
running so low, and no amount of big titty goth GFs handing him a pack of Charizard shiny Pokemon cards could cure the hole inside of his soul. Not even the warmth I'd feel making Calvin cut down an entire forest to fuel my need for relentless construction would spare me from the agony I felt in my soul. Could only to be compounded by this fucking moth that they decided to strap a C4 to and plot a course directly from my cock hole. I write that? <laughs> my script writing. Holy shit. Who let me have access to a PC? Now I labeled this portion of the video Will Broken because at this point it was so late in the night that I no longer could even call at night due to the sun coming through my window. There was no gas left in the tank. Energy sufficiently depleted. My caffeine levels rivaling berserker rage finally shit the bed but as a warrior of the Hot Wheels faith the only thing I could do was soldier on. But I was sluggish and slipping. No longer was I the master over the forces of death and with a valiant rise into the stratosphere I was mercilessly gunned down once again. As your self-governing originally banned on Twitter for trying to sell crypto scammer Manlin I knew the only option was to return the next day. I woke up from my nap like I was the fucking Terminator and committed myself to the grind. Because my doctor is a real one, he told me that I'm morbidly obese, so I gather the runes, descend into the aquatic passages, traverse the light-bearing halls, and put on this beautiful set. Now this right here is fashion that fucks. Take that shrink- <laughs> A call upon Gundam egghead armor set. Ekthar better scramble like an egg before he gets folded like an omelet, because when you mess with an egg, you get the yolk. Wait, Riley, no. Oh no, Riley, put that down. Is that a fucking unwavering duty? <laughs> Hindsight is 2020 because goddamn, I'd rather wipe my ass with the cheese grater than use unwavering duty. This is how you know that I've crossed the line into mental illness. My armor set was meant to represent an egg, but little did I know that I was being a fucking egg by using unwavering duty for boss DPS. You gotta be drinking the Kool-Aid. Either way, this run goes well until I realize that I'd strike with more venom if I put peanut butter on my hands and box the guy with a nut allergy than using this dog water gun. Ooh! With my crushing defeat for the boner killer that is Ekthar, Bungie decided to kick a man when he's down by having servers less stable than my mental health after a six hour PvP losing streak. I'm talking the kind of instability that makes a game of Jenga in an earthquake look like a monk meditating. Even a lobotomized cabal phalanx would run a smoother operation than this. <laughs> We're in uncharted territory here, fellas, where the only thing dropping faster than my connection is my will to live. Bungie, please! Must have been about the hour all the Australians woke up to fuck my internet. In the next run, I return to my well of radiance because as a professional warlock, I'm born to Nova and forced to well. Returning to the only thing a warlock main is good for. It allowed me to survive and with Starfire Protocol getting nerfed after receiving an ornament like I predicted, there was no choice other than to slap on my oven mitts and start cooking some fucking thralls. This exotic, the Sunfire Braces exotic, improved my killing power exponentially and with the perk that allows you to recover restoration effects by killing with solar weapons or abilities, heat rises, and phoenix dive, I was nigh unkillable. All that power and all that build crafting couldn't defeat my most dastardly of foes, that being my short term memory loss as I dive into the depths and confidently hit one of the runes on the wall and watch it kill me instantly. <laughs> so my dungeon did new things to me that I didn't know were possible. On run 24, I return with an absolute vengeance. The devastation I unleashed upon the hive was abominable. But just to cut my momentum on the second damage phase, Ekthar decided to hit me with a shield in the spine, damn near one-shotting me in the process. It was here I realized that I really needed to upgrade my resilience. All right, listen up, children, because Papa Rise got a plan. You see, after perusing the mods and consulting with the Riley Reloaded Research and Development Department, I landed on a new conclusion. So open up your history books because we're taking a trip back in time. The reason why I've been unable to cook with Solar Avoid is because we haven't uncovered those teachings yet. You see, in the first episode of Book of Gambit, we only studied lightning, and it is here that I had an idea. The principles of Arc Warlock were what I needed to succeed. Striking fast and hard could prove useful here. Not only that, but the mods for this season all center around Arc and Amplifying its killing power and survivability. To what degree, I was unsure, but being a man who has recently rewritten the chapter on the way of lightning in the Book of Gambit, it was time to see what this bad boy could do. So I transformed the egg into a beacon of raw sexual attraction, creating not one loadout, but two, consisting of hot swap between Chaos Reach and Fallen Sunstar. And the plan was then simple to me. Use the Warlock's healing rift, an ability spam generated by the ionic traces of Fallen Sunstar, and the new mod that gives you some hefty damage damage resistance when amplified, and use that killing power to devastate the battlefield. In the second encounter, while Ekthar 
far as being the usual catheter that he is, I'll pop a rift in the statues and swap to my Geomag stabilizer and laser the boss into a lament combo. A simple plan in theory. All that was left was to learn how to execute it. Now when I say the devastation unleashed by the ARC subclass was anything short of demonic, I am lying to you. The amount of damage dealt and the speed from the running boost trivialized this encounter to the point where Papa Rai could easily teach his sermon. Serving up a double dicking is hard for the Guardian on the go. That's why this video is sponsored by me as I tingle the balls of any enemy that gets in my way. I use Thunderlord to blow apart the ogres, chain lightning to reveal the path, and chaos reach to laser down the wizard with deep sight in the middle. This should have been a speedrun world record for glitchless any percent. As I cleared this first encounter in a solid seven minutes, there was no mercy in my heart as the Hot Wheels man descended upon the dungeon with reckless abandon. I mean, just look at this shit. I'm trading blows like I was studying to fight Elon Musk and Zuckerbot at the same time, but I don't fight lizard people or fellow crypto scammers. And when we finally hit Ekthar, the damage is just shack nasty. Sadly, I didn't know how to sustain my health or abilities yet as this is my first venture into the ARC subclass, but the raw, untapped potential was enough to drive me well above my mortal limits, meaning that for the first time, I saw victory was within my grasp. What feels like seconds for you is actually hours of Riley experience in the season of just how deep my asshole can stretch before there's permanent damage. To further damage the essence of my soul with all the hope that I've accumulated, this was the first time I've knocked Ekthar's health down this far, meaning that growth was indeed happening. I pop out of the water and could you just imagine how terrifying this would be to the loosened hive? Just watching him rise from the depths and start slinging grenades. He's in the walls! <laughs> I lasered down Ekthar with a mighty blow, moving at blistering speeds, refining my movement with each passing moment. With Ekthar's health being dropped by a monumental amount, I descend into the water with the symbols only for this absolute turd juggler to knock my donkey ass out of the way while I look for the symbols that I hadn't fully memorized yet. He then bumps me out of the way once again, launching me far away from my pressure bubble as my shield slowly leech and I choke the death on methane. You gotta be sucking me good. <laughs> In the next run, my Neanderthal brain lost the ability for pattern recognition. I'd assume that's because I've thrown so much lightning and experienced so much bloom in the past 20 hours of Destiny gaming that my retinas had lost some color cones inside of them. There's nothing more demoralizing than pressing the symbol you thought was the right one and watching your guy crumple because he doesn't understand the theory of complex shapes. Now, there's been a couple of runs in between the previous one and this one. You see, I've become a demon in my own skin, fully realizing my inner destiny potential. Shaking off the boomer gamer rust and dad gamer mentality, I was now one with the grease that outlined my forehead. Ekthar would go to dunk his nuts on my forehead, but due to the grease and the smoothness, that shit would glide right off. I was aware of everything in my battle, the only tension release being the squeak of my controller, crying out in agony as I wiped the floor with the hive and its well-being. But Riley wasn't going to crack under this pressure. I lasered down the room, turning everything inside of this dungeon into a fine, wet paste. There was nothing that could survive the onslaught I brought. Everything was perfect and down to a science. Not a single movement was out of my reach, planned and executed with precision. And after a battle of only 28 minutes, I planted my feet, stared down the auger of so much anguish, tightened my core, and unleashed a key blast from the depths of my soul, vaporizing him from his corporeal form. The orgasmic release of finally finishing off this detriment to my physical well-being was heavenly. Proving to myself that I had the capability to stand in the face of adversity gave me everything I needed to rise in the event of another failure. Ark was disgusting in this dungeon. I've always loved the Ark subclass, and getting the chance to see it flex its muscles is all a parking lot prof it could ask for. With Ekthar no longer plaguing my boners, it was time to delve into the sea, where we witnessed the space whale. This is another moment of Bungie making you feel small in a universe that is so much larger than you are. A beautiful scene that is even sweeter when you overcame overwhelming odds. I should go get help. They beat my ass down here. <laughs> call Zavala. Get Icora or something. Call, call an esoteric. <laughs> The amount of gear I've obtained from running the first encounter over and over again almost makes me want to get someone to clean my vault because I'm suffering from success over here. Sometimes it hurts being this fucking magnificent. Ignore all the previous deaths, <laughs> just get one victory and it's all bravado. Damn, I'm good. Damn, I'm pretty damn good. I even got this cold comfort that roll with bait and switch and a tracking module. Honestly, the perfect weapon to take on the final boss with. Double special has become my new best friend as path of least resistance and either a shotgun or arbalest carry me through my ammo deficiency. 
tendencies. I skulk my way through this hauntingly beautiful ship. I love loose and hive architecture. Bungie really hit the nail on the head with this art direction. Could you imagine a DLC expansion campaign that comes loaded with missions like this dungeon? I think I'd be in heaven. I'm not even asking for a lot. I need like seven or eight of them and I would be in heaven. That's what Witch Queen gave me. I want to go back pre-Lightfall. It is then we bear witness to one of the greatest reveals in Destiny. That the reason the Hive have decided to invade this methane moon was to revive Oryx, our ancient foe, one that almost broke the backs of the Guardian ranks on his knee and subjugated the world to darkness. If not for a few brave warriors and a dream, a darker future would have surely come to pass on humanity, like so many of the alien races before it. This is the kind of tone and storytelling I wanted inside of Lightfall. Instead, I got a whoa, surfer bro, and a and the fucking cabal again. <laughs> How many times I gotta beat your ass callous before you learn not to like it? Give me something dangerous, something threatening. Now, most of the time in Destiny, I don't care about what we're fighting as it feels like a diversion from actually important things. Even the witness to an extent. But this shit right here feels like an Avengers level threat. That's not a big bad. In my mind, that is the big bad. I'm more worried about this guy waking up and realizing he's got anger issues than I am a smoky megamind entering the Traveler non-consensually. This was a threat you'd put the Hot Wheels man on. <laughs> that and opening a jar of pickles, something on my skill level. <laughs> Oh, hey, you have experience with this sort of thing. Any chance you can help me revive him? That's what you get for operating without Vanguard permission. This paracausal threat of universe-ending proportions tried to give us the slip and resurrect back into my plane of existence. Not on my watch. Nighty-night, Greaseball. I engage in ritualistic combat with the Hive Wizard. Guardians have so much experience disrupting Hive rituals at this point, it's gotta be a piss-off. Without even understanding how their powers work, we consistently roll in to kick them in the nuts. I don't even know what half this shit does, but hell, it hurts you, so I'm gonna do it. This, this battle revolves around being quick on your feet and not being afraid to use your Warlock Rip. Now my brother's in light, I won't lie to you. If you do not have Amplify or some sort of otherworldly resistance, you're basically ruining your chances at securing the Victory Royale. The biggest drawback of this boss is the long setup time to get to damage and the brief window you have to dish as much as you can. Being a solo player means your damage will never be phenomenal. But oddly enough, using the rocket launcher we got from earlier from this dungeon with the bait and switch tracking module is one of the god roll weapons a solo player can use for consistent damage. The main technique involves doing the encounter is normal, and the moment you dunk the last symbol, you whip out the arbalest and snipe the boss before she teleports to knock out her shields. This will extend the amount of time you can fire your rockets and stop her from teleporting in the entirety of the damage phase. And due to running double specials, you will be dropping more heavy ammo than you know what to do with. The only hard part of this entire boss is securing your health when making a frantic dash for the deep sight and keeping track of the moths. But if you have the mod that makes your damage resistance go up when amplified, your rift in 100 resilience, you can easily squeak this dungeon out after Ektar. After Ekthar though. Ekthar is, Ekthar is a bitch. <laughs> I don't want to ever go back and fight him. This room is so much better than Ekthar's because there is so much more breathing room once you knock out the kamikaze moths and the knights on the side. Whereas when you take on Ekthar, you're not fighting a few hive like you are in this room, but rather you're fighting every fucking hive there ever was. I mean, look at this shit. My first bout of damage goes extremely well, knocking at about a 16 of her health as a solo player. Not bad, but I knew that with a good volley, I'd be able to crank that bitch up to 11. I was playing it slow and steady. But alas, when the mods were summoned from the pits of hell, my phone rang. And with that split second lapse in focus, I made a fucking Neanderthalic play and dove towards the moths after blowing two of them up, shattering any chance at peace that lingered in my soul and making me wonder if I'm truly a Destiny veteran or if I should put my blueberry armor on and go back to dicking around in the Cosmodrome. Now even though we've spent 90% of this dungeon defeated, getting blasted on nearly every twist and turn, you'd expect the Hot Wheels man to fold like a lawn chair. But as I said previously, we do a little rising to the occasion and showing myself that it was possible to beat the second encounter at a breakneck pace with Lament, the art class, and a dream meant that I thought that it was possible. This run is after a myriad of defeats in between where I honed my edge like a blade and now had the strength of 20 warlocks in one. The amount of pain I dealt to get to Ekthar was unreal. Now this boss has an insane amount of health and walking in here as a solo player and mopping the floor with him in only 20 minutes was a feeling of pure bliss. <laughs> <laughs> I have finally shaken off my destiny rust and once again returned to the Walmart Lord within. Ekthar, you should be grateful because no longer are you witnessing your average vanguard warlock. You're dealing with the fully realized Heart Wheels warlock. I dominated that encounter with nothing but skill and grace and moved onto the outside to maneuver through the hive ship. I fight my way all the way through to the boss and play carefully but steady. The fight is perfectly aligned. I am a menace in human form. The rockets were flying. The electricity was 
in the air, and the fish were singing, under the sea. <laughs> in this run, I made a downright fool of myself, though. For some reason, right at the finish line, where all that was needed was a deep sight to secure the win, I decided it would be best to dive in and place a rip, but I neglected my buffs. I forgot that I wasn't amplified, causing the wizard to absolutely melt me. But with victory on the tip of my tongue, there was only one thing left to do. You see, this is where it all finally came together. I absolutely love these dungeons and undertaking new solo flawlesses. It's a therapy to me that showcases little ways that I can grow as a player. It's always amazing to me to look back and see the journey that I've undertaken, how I came to where I'm at, each little movement that I learned to slightly readjust in the heat of the moment, all culminating in perfection. I never claim to be perfect, and I often make mistakes, but those aren't the be-all and the end-all. The mistakes count as steps along the pathway to achieving your goals. Slipping up is inevitable, but you only ever truly fail when you give up and stop trying. With everything I've learned, I stopped the first encounter at a breakneck speed, becoming one with the movement tech. With my weapons and finding a new love for the Hot Wheels bumper car, my faithful companion, I make my way through the depths, bringing devastation among the hive in Ekthar's arena. I maneuver my way across the gap and begin my fight with Samuma, taking in everything that I've learned and mastering control over patience and knowing when to strike, I slowly but surely whittle down her health. It is here we find ourselves at the final chunk of health. I get bombarded with tons of damage, but thankfully due to the rift and being amplified, I'm able to tank it until I can launch into the air and pop off a chaos reach, and my old friend the Ark Soul finishes her off. I grab hold of the ghost and crack that bitch sending it back into the ether. It was finally over. Moments of pain and here I stood triumphant. I fired my guns in all directions for the excitement and energy I wielded was intense. For the Hot Wheels Lord hath returned to destiny and laid claim to the Olo Flawless. There was to be a grand celebration for this crowning achievement, so I headed a character select screen and DCV my hunter for a time sake. Adios, boss! Only when I had already pressed delete did I look to my left monitor and realize that there was actually a lot of good gear on my hunter, meaning that when I inevitably make another hunter, I will have a lot of armor recollecting to do. I don't keep doing this shit. Can't pull a fast one on me, Bungie! <laughs> and with that, I solo flawless ghosts of the deep so you don't have to. I'd like to thank each and every one of my patrons who have stuck with me all this time. I can't underestimate how much you guys have done for me. See, the reason I dropped off the face of the earth was to try and learn 3D animation to make something truly amazing. But I've also talked to a couple of artists that have shown me that yeah, I ain't the best. <laughs> Book of Gambit was like early red versus blue with some real shit animation. But I was just impressed that it was there. And you know what? That kind of jankiness kind of suits me in a way. So maybe I just got to push past that barrier and get to it. But I know I can do better and I want to make something memorable for you. So I want to give a huge Huge thanks to everyone, starting off with Alea, Nate Spence, Kermit, Sewer of Slides, Saucy Jose, Issa Joe, Modern Gamer, The Immaculate Horse, Queffers the Forgettable, Perfect Question, Isaac Hartley, Shadow Fox, Sorocco, Golden Care, Wisa Dementia, Chipaske, Hi, I Dropped My Pocket, Hard Dock, Flediddledorf, <laughs> that's a fucking amazing name, Sosa, Warlock Jump is Cock and Ball Torture, <laughs> I'm with you, Ryan, Luna, Trans of Genders, Cyborg Guy, Master's Eye, <laughs> Noodle, Snoodle, <laughs> Patriarch Stifler, Ramenless Gold, Shenanigan 69, Rolks, third test that you guys are on a fucking whole other level. You're gonna make me say this shit. Spencer and Delilah, Hopeless Chloromatic, Alexander the Mediocre, Skyward Echo, Not the Legend, Sona Shot, Light Wolf Gaming, The Deep State, plus Power Color equals Pain for Papa Hot Wheels Profit. I swear Power Color is haunting my PC. Every GPU I get somewhat doesn't work in some way. I gotta get a, I gotta go to video. Scorn Hub Premium God, you guys in a fucking roll. Parzival, Doorman is God, Reject Claw, Happy, The Unhappy Cat, Darth C, Delta Shell, Marasov Strap Off, Grenshu, Sticky Kid, 104. Oh, I forgot about that one. <laughs> Zero Kelvin, IV Omega, IV, Exo Warlock, George Neely, Xtron, Preston Rhodes, Nitron, Patches 3, Lalo Salamanca, I'm back. It was you, Wumpus the Friendless, Wildfire 56, Dr. Dinky, Riley, but spelt inferior. Just kidding, it's me. 
Lee, Agenda, ah, I see what you did there, Cameron Spoon, Phantom Nuva, Moose Master, Master of Meese, what is your favorite color, and why is it power color, also, you're not my dad, <laughs> you can't tell me what to do, wash your ass, son, Dragon Boy SD, Chase Kilday, Zerlin, Vibronius Michael, I love Gambit, then do I have a book series for you, Ash Incendia, Legend of Swoop, Zeriak, Ogstratus, Bilbo, Ahegao Kurimi, Tully, Riley from Berta, Steven Wagner, Xabiar, Ibrahim Altwiri, Grumpy Grandpa, Jonathan Schultz, Hero Glyph, Ixis, Fenbuskis P, Dem Dirty Weasels. You're getting error coded too, eh? I feel, <laughs> I feel it. Geopolitionel, insert name here. The Geneva Suggestions, Ahmed Obashri, Zombie Fox, Conquer Reloaded, Jack Mage, Arik McMire, Crusader, Saint of the Walmart Jesus, Spread the Good Word, Eslepius, Pathetic Mango, Momo No Legs, Goose 28, Founder of the Knights of Reloaded. Lee. Woodman the Splinter. Hope you're doing well, Woodman. Magneto. Your friend Steven. Sir Depresso. U.S. Navy Squid. Luke Sturch. Enter your name 94. Sharky. Matt Herrick. Later. Gamma Rad. Cameron Scholes. Rikon 6. Zuppel Tupler Tummy Yum Bidi. Fuck it, I swear to God. <laughs> KXNG Kitty Bitty. Garrett Kane. Demetrius. Pepsi Maine. Magneto. Flat Surface. Kell of Ankle Taking. Flat Surface. I hate to break it to you, but they took that from us. Nothing is sacred. Uncertain. V. Cosmic Essence. Arliss McGuire. Zarin King. Sensei Smalls. Mordant. T7 Code 99. I.B. Stevie. Jonathan Blaylock. Cozy from the... Eamon Smith. Wrapping his legs around the rocky spire. Hot Wheels adjusted and picked up his prize from the top. A blue and orange toy car. That was nice, Lizard. <laughs> Thank you. Also, I love the art fan art you sent me. This is gorgeous. Everything you create is beautiful. <laughs> Riley Sheldon. Azure Knight. Lone Ranger 2412. Capone is bad at gaming. Can't even clear hates with both. <laughs> I never know what you mean. Tekka, the mugless Sovat. Fuck, I still haven't done that. Zerks 14A, X9X9X9X9X9. Ben Stanfill, XD7228. Kevin Noda, Feesh. Gamer Weenus, Volkeen, Thrumund and Dragonwall. Hot Wheels Enthusiast, Kefnet the Useless, CO Camo 3, Crimbo the Undyed, Bogos Binted, James Escalante, Some Archie Desk Hopper, Xavier Human, and Fufu Akio. You guys are amazing, and I'll try my best to be around the channel more. I know, I know that I say that every time, but with each one of you helping me like this, I'm closer and closer to doing this thing full time. I just find it hard to sacrifice any creative integrity I have. I want to make stuff that you guys will be proud of me for, and the support that you've shown has honestly been unreal, and I hope that with each and every one of these videos I create, they mean something to you, because I'm always going to remember the fact that you helped me create them, and make things that I never thought were possible, and I extend that to everyone who watches this. Thank you for allowing Allowing me to be your Hot Wheels provider. I've been Papa Rye, and I cannot wait to catch you in the next.